Hey, Brian, you ready for some coding? I'm ready. I've prepared my mind and my body for some coding. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. This is uh, this should be familiar. This is the uh, Arduino sketch environment. Now, we've done a couple of things. We've included one library, Fast LED. That's the library that lets us access uh, WS2812 LEDs. Yep. Uh, gives us all the, the cool commands and shortcuts so that we can make it do what we want it to do. Oh, we've seen that before. Oh, we have. And we've also seen all of this. So, uh, remember, I like to define and put my variables up top. Mm -hmm. just so that I know what are the variables that I can play with. That's just good coding. That's just good coding. So I've got data pin 3. That's the pin to which I'm going to connect my WS2812 string. Mm -hmm. Because remember, I'm going from one LED ring to the next, so all of them are one string. So 16 LEDs each, I've got 32 LEDs in the string. That makes sense. Okay. I've also got this, the number of LEDs, that's 32. Mm -hmm. I've got the brightness. Uh, right now I have it set for 100, and the reason why I have it set for 100 is because I could go to 255, but you make it brighter, you use more power. Right. Uh, and also, typically the place where you use these are indoors, like in conferences. Uh, 100 is plenty bright. You I was going to say, it's just overpowered. Even under the studio lights that we have right now, it's plenty bright. Right. I mean, look at this. So this is set for 100. It's not like you can't see that. No. Uh, but if you if, if you go much higher than this, it just becomes, especially on our cameras, it's just blown a blob out. of light. It's yeah, no, out. it looks good at 100. So, right. so the other thing uh, that you want to know is this, the speed. So mm. this is actually, this the number that you put here is in the delay. It's going to be divided by this, 1,000 divided by this number. So the higher you make this number, the less delay there's going to be. Okay. The less delay there's going to be, the faster the animations are going to run. Okay. All right. Now this is this is new. This is specifically for my warp core <laughs> animations. Uh, nice. Remember how, if I'm going to use a value multiple times, I like to have it as a definition rather than typing in that value multiple times. Right. So then, if you want to go back and change it, you don't have to do it uh, like a hundred times. Precisely. I don't want to have to change it in the twenty different spots. Right. Uh, because I might forget one, and suddenly it looks weird. This way. As long as I use these values, the, these uh, the warp red, warp green, warp blue, wing red, wing green, wing blue, mm -hmm. all of it will look uniform. Very nice. And I can just change it in one place and it changes it for the entire animation. Perfect. All right. So the other things that we're going to do is uh, right below here, this is the function that is going to be called that reads the potentiometer. So in the original 100 lines example that we use for the steampunk goggles, mm -hmm. All it did was cycle through the animation. So it would run an animation for about 10 seconds and then move to the next, then the next, and the next, and go back to the top of the list. Right. I wanted to make it so that you could actually select which animation that you, were, you wanted to use. Mm -hmm. So what I did was this. I did an A read, which is an analog read, of 7. So I'm reading pin 7, analog pin 7. Uh, which is connected to my potentiometer. Right, so it's getting the, the signal from that. Got right, it. that is going to bring me back a value between 0 and, and 1024. Okay. Oh, actually, it goes all the way up to 1200, but 1024 but you've, is... Yeah. you've bracketed it out to 1024? Right. So what I'm going to do is uh, that gives me my, my value, but then we've added this. This is a range check. Remember how we talked mm -hmm. about how this is important? Because every once in a while, if you've got a flaky potentiometer, it will go down to less than 0, and it will go above 1024. Right. Uh, which we don't want because if it's out of range, weird things happen. Most likely the Arduino just freezes up. Right. So what I've done here is I've actually told it, if it goes down below zero, set it back to zero. Mm -hmm. And if it goes above 1010, set, set it, it to 1010. 10, 10. So yeah. absolutely guaranteed it will not go out of range. It can only go down to zero. It can only go to, to up to 1010. So even if something funky happens on the potentiometer, mm -hmm. it's not going to crash the Arduino out. Cool. And so the next step is then bracketing out the different patterns between? Precisely. Because I uh, going between uh, 0 and 10, 10 doesn't help me a lot no. in choosing one of 10 different patterns. Right. So what I've done here is I've used a, a built-in function, we've seen it before, called map. So my PAT choice, my pattern choice, is the map function ru uh, run on that value I just um, uh, took from the potentiometer and range checked. So from 0 to 110, so it, because remember, it goes, that potentiometer goes from nothing, from 0, all right. the way up to 110. And because I've range checked it, I know it's only going to be that. And then you do 0 to 9. Precisely. So it does all the math for me. So mm -hmm. it divides the range up into 10 pieces, and it says, okay, if, as long as you're within this and this, it stays at, at number 1. This and this is number 2. Mm -hmm. it, it does that for me. Nice. Which is nice. 
Okay, and the reason why we have zero to nine is because zero is also a value, so it's ten. It's right, zero to right. Nine is it 10 is values. ten, but it yeah. is actually ten. <laughs> Below this, these are the ten different animations that I can choose from. Uh, so blank is the one that I wrote, just so that it slowly goes off to 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 off. Right. Uh, then I've got rainbow. It's a standard rainbow pattern. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's I'm, pretty. Yeah, these are all, we've seen these all before mm. until we get down to warp, warp core. core. So warp core is new. Uh, and I created this again for the uh, the 3D printed warp core that I created for my room. Mm -hmm. um, all this is going to do is it's going to, it's it's one of these. It's a follow. So it it says, okay, where are you? Move one up. Move one up. Move one up. Move one up. Every time it runs, it's going to move it to the next position. Right, right, right. And it's the one you have uh, running right now, isn't it? Actually, the one that is I'm it? running right now. This is the dual warp core. Oh, dual warp. Yeah. Oh so my. the single warp core looks like. Let me let me move it back a little bit. So that's the single. So this is the code we're looking at right now. What it does is imagine these two LEDs, uh, the, or, or these two were on a single strip of LEDs. So what they'd be doing is right now the, they'd be converging. Wom, 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 wom. And they, right. Right. That so makes that's, sense. that's the warp core. When I go to the double, imagine this, but there's LEDs on both sides. So now it's doing it, uh, you know, so you can see it. Yes. And it makes this noise too, right? <laughs> Warm, warm, yeah, absolutely, warm. of course. <laughs> so uh, if you look at this, all that this is is a series of if statements. It's if it's less than zero, then move it up. If it's greater than a certain level, then move it back down. Okay. Right? Uh, and I have warp core, and then I have warp core two, and this right. is the dual sided. These use, as you see, wi uh, see wing red, wing green, warp red, mm -hmm. warp green, et cetera, et cetera. These are the ones you defined up ahead, uh, up above. top. So yeah. if I change that, I can completely change how the animation looks. In fact, let's do that right now. Don't so, do it. It's perfect the way no, it is. Let's go ahead and plug in. All right, fine. Boom. There we go. We've, we've frozen it. Okay. <laughs> and let's go ahead and uh, send it to COM4. And we're going to send it to an Arduino Nano. And uh, what shall we change it to? So right now, if you go up to, uh, to my code, Alex. I've got warp red of zero, so there's no red. Yeah. There's a 100, so about half, less, less than half of it is green, and mm -hmm. then all of it is blue. Mm. So let's let's reverse this. Let's say no blue, and all red. Yeah. Two five five. And let's change this to no red, no blue, and all green. Yeah. Sure. Is that. Oh, will that make? It, can we make it look like the uh, goggles in Jurassic Park? I guess if they're all green. Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, we just have to color match it. So that's it's going to compile it. And as soon as you see it freeze, it means it's going to be uploading. It's going to take a while because it's a new build. And uh, God, there we go. Uploading. That's the noise uploading makes, I'm pretty sure. Well, no, that's there we go. So nice. we, we change the color. And because we because we use these definition of this this variable down below, I only change it in one spot and the entire animation changes. That is cool. It's so much easier than trying to rewrite it every time you want to change the color. I like it. Yeah. I like so it's getting lot. closer to Jurassic Park, but I think we have to, we'd have to get rid of the red entirely. Yeah, we have to get rid of the red and then let's see, let's go back to the single. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You might have to change the animation a little bit to make because I think the it's spaced out a little differently. But. Yeah, I, I don't think they show every LED. It's like every fifth LED. Yeah, and it just and goes around like and around. around. I mean, we can we can make these. I mean, oh, if we'll you if those. you want, we, I, I'll do that for you, Brian. No, I, I want to give it a shot. Yeah. Okay. So it's four and then rotating around. Okay. Right. I, I want to work on that. I'll try it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the setup and the loop. This is, remember, this is the part where we set up the, ver the, the program the way that we're going to use it. Setup is super simple. Uh, we've seen this before. If you use WS2812s, it sets up the, the array. So remember how WS2812 works is it creates an array. Mm -hmm. You fill that array with values for red, blue, green. Right. So every light has a red value, a blue value, and a green value. Mm -hmm. So I fill that out. And then I, I do the, uh, the send. So I send it down the line, mm -hmm. and every LED will take three bytes, representing the red, the blue, the green, and then pass, and it, then down. pass it down the line. Yeah, for yeah. as many LEDs that you determined. Precisely. Which, 32 in this project. And then my loop, remember, we, we want the loops to always be small. The loop should be very simple. It should call functions. It shouldn't have a whole lot in it. Mm -hmm. This is pretty dang small. So this first one <laughs> is going to run the animation pattern. The second one is going to cycle the base color for the rainbow. Because any, any pattern I have that uses rainbow, I need something to say, OK, change the color of the rainbow. 
<laughs> Change the color of the rainbow. Yeah. This one, this actually checks every half second. It's going to call that that the uh, the potentiometer function that I showed you up top. Right. And it's going to say what's your value. If the value changes, then it changes the pattern that it's running. Okay. And then down below, this is this is the super simple one. Once it's okay. done all that, show the LED and then delay. And that delay is important because if I have no delay, mm -hmm. it, the, uh, it would just look like a bunch of really, really fast blinking lights. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to discern it from the other one. Yeah, precisely. Now, Brian, hmm. next week, we're going to go ahead and we're going to sit down and we're going to solder these. We're going to put it together entirely in real time so people get a sense of how difficult this is. This is actually not a, a difficult project. It's Once you fun. have all the pieces together. One thing I do want to change, though, is um, I've always wanted a potentiometer for brightness and a potentiometer for speed. Because oh. you saw, you, I, can, I can control those, right. brightness and speed. Yeah. I could do the same thing with a potentiometer. The problem is this frame isn't big enough to have another potentiometer like this one. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, use the cart system. I'm going to put two very small potentiometers, so the screwdriver ones, the, yeah. the tiny little ones, so I can open up the back and adjust animation speed and brightness. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. I like that but idea. Uh, just on my version. Just on your version? Oh, we'll see about that. Mine has to be a little bit better than yours, Ryan. I'm wondering, too, if you could make like a, um, just an indent or like a little, and then have part of the, the gear ex extruding out and then just use it as like an up-down, like kind of almost like a volume slide for brightness. I, I actually started out doing that. Yeah, uh, is it really hard? And to... Well, the problem is it cuts into all the space I needed for my Arduino. That makes sense. And you wouldn't be able to use the cartridge system with yeah. that either. Yeah. This, I kind of like, seriously, the cartridge system is probably the coolest upgrade here because it really makes this uh, uh, flexible. In fact, if you look at this one, this is my super secret prototype version. <gasps> this actually uses, uh, there's, a, there's a mini breadboard in there. What? Yeah, so actually, uh, well, it's, it's, it's kind of tight. Yeah. You can't really see it, but yeah, there's... I believe So there it. we go. See, there's jumpers. Oh, yeah. So I can, I can very easily change the wiring <laughs> on this one. That, I designed it that way, and yeah. you know, I just kind of, I kind of like that. It's, it gives me the ability to have a finished product, but at, at a moment's notice, I could just change everything if I don't like it. Well, whatever happened to the, you were going to do steam coming out, right? Like using a, yeah. some sort of vapor system. Could uh, you do one that has a battery and that, and then sw hot swap it, basically? It <laughs> totally works, except uh, one time it caught on fire. Oh. Well, you know, you got a battery strapped to your head anyway, so <laughs> why not? <laughs> Who would have thought? that putting a semi-flammable liquid in contact with a broiling hot coil could cause fire. I, you don't know until you do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, I will say it worked really cool for about 15 minutes. The problem is the coil needs to stay submerged in the fog liquid. It, when it, so oh. when the reservoir ran too low, then it, it just started... <laughs> <laughs> it started making it a actually, lot of smoke. It melted yeah. the frame. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And, hmm. and someone, someone's like, Hey man, your your goggles are smoking. I'm like, yeah, they're <laughs> yeah. supposed to go. No, no, no. no, I, no. I think they're like on fire. Like in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> Those goggles are smoking yeah. hot.